This is Just The Job. Kia ora and welcome to Just The Job. This week we have three more really exciting careers for you to check out and you never know, one of them just might be what you're looking for. We'll also have heaps of advice and tips to help make that all important career choice a whole lot easier for you as well. In today's show we catch up again with Brittany who featured earlier in the series when she checked out how freight gets to New Zealand from overseas. This time she's looking at the process of transporting perishable goods from New Zealand to the rest of the world. Casey loves big boys toys and is a real outdoors kind of guy so we send him along to find out about a career where he could work with large vehicles every day. And Nathan might have a farming background but he's going to find out about a whole new aspect of agricultural work that could be just the job for him. But first up let's join Brittany as she finds out how salmon gets to where it's going without being ruined when she visits a specialised freight forwarding company. My name's Brittany Thackham, I'm 16 years old. I've already looked at the import side of things for freight forwarding and today I'm looking at the export side of things. New Zealand's economy depends on exporting primary produce to the world. Our meat, sheep, beef and venison exports are worth millions and millions of dollars. And fish and shellfish are huge players too. Getting highly perishable produce to its destination in tip-top condition is the job of a specialised freight forwarder. Freight forwarders like Hellman Perishable Logistics in Christchurch. How are you going? My name's Cameron from Hellman Logistics. Hi, I'm Brittany. I'm pretty keen to have a look what's in there. What's keen to learn some freight forwarding? Yep. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Alright. Cameron Knauth has worked for HPL for four years. He started on the warehouse floor and now, based in the office, is in charge of freighting salmon from Marlborough to destinations around the world. So okay. what exactly is your job? I'm in tr responsible for making sure that the product arrives is the right quantity, um, is here on time, uh, making sure it's going to arrive on time at its appropriate destination yeah. and also making sure any documents that we have to send with it are exact and correct. All perishable produce has to be kept either frozen or cool at all stages of transportation so the facility has large walk-in freezers and cool stores. New Zealand King Salmon send daily shipments of fresh chilled salmon to Asia and LA. Brittany is going to book today's shipment through the freight forwarding system. The journey of the salmon starts in the Marlborough Sounds within New Zealand King Salmon processing plants and farms are located. It is sent then via a truck down to Christchurch here and then onto the airlines where it is sent overseas, usually within 48 hours of being farmed. With 135 boxes of salmon just arrived from Marlborough, Brittany's getting on to the shipment orders. The gross weight is 2,673. That's great. From that, now we can start entering um, details into our system to create the documents for travel. The salmon is being booked to leave on this afternoon's Qantas flight to Sydney and on to Tokyo. An airway bill has to be created, so the weight, the space needed, customs clearance and allocation of codes is entered into the system. So here we have is the airway bill, which yep. we'll separate. Alright, so customs and the airlines know everything, is mm -hmm. there anything else you need to Yep, what we need to do is we need to tell the boys in the store, um, we need to give them labels so they can label every single polybin. Yes, that does mean 135 sticky labels for 135 bins. This is going to be the unit, airline unit, we're going to be loading. The whole thing is on rollers. Yeah. So even with thousands of kilograms of product on it, you can easily roll them off and roll them back on. The type of person that would be good for this job is someone who can think on their feet, who can communicate their ideas clearly and precisely, and also make important decisions. For example, we may have an aircraft delayed, be it mechanical, be it weather related, and if this happens, it may miss a connecting flight, or it may not go at all. So we have to think on our feet, we may have to bring the product back to our cool store facilities, or we may have to arrange another flight for it to travel on. We just had word one of our flower shipments that are coming in is slightly larger than we originally booked. Yep. So we've got to uh, contact the airline and uh, get them to make more room for us. Hi, it's Brittany here from HPL. I've got a consignment of flowers here, but I need to up the weight, um, 400 kgs. We've got a wee bit of problem. We can do it to Sydney on 46, but um, Tokyo's overbooked at this stage. OK, they can't take the extra. So what I'll do, I'll check with Sydney and see what they can do on the Tokyo League and get back to you, eh? Thank you, bye. 
it's going to get back to One of the biggest challenges is actually getting the space and getting the bookings onto the airlines. I always try to do advance bookings for the entire month at an estimate of what we will be sending, but sometimes we need to increase that space. Most of the times we can get the space we choose, but if we can't get that extra space, then we've got a problem. Now, are they all on the first truck? Um, I need to get another can. Two PMCs? Excellent. Bad news. The freighter was uh, fog-bound out of Christchurch. Hi, HPR, you're speaking with Brittany. Yes, I have a call back. From Sydney. Uh, they, they can actually take that extra space you're after. OK, thank you very much. Yep. All sorted? Yep, yeah, they can do it. Excellent. Heading out on the same plane as the bins of salmon is another shipment of frozen beef. Brittany gets to find out how to turn an airline crate into a fridge. What we're going to do here is we're going to open this up, get you to grab some poly, or poly the bottom. The reason why we're going to do that is going to protect the product from any sort of heat. How come you're putting foil in here? We're going to have frozen product in here, and with the frozen we're going to have dry ice, and this is going to act like a big freezer really. So safely packed and with documentation transmitted, the frozen meat and fresh king salmon heads off on its way to Sydney and beyond. In the sushi bars of Tokyo and Taiwan, the fresh taste of Marlborough will be on the menu again. Brittany did very well. She was keen to learn and she actually got stuck in when it came to the dirty jobs. So um, all in all, I think she was good. I've really enjoyed my time here at Christchurch and um, the experience has just been amazing and I hope one day I can do something like this again. There are several national certificates related to warehousing and logistics with a specialised level 4 certificate in international freight forwarding. There are no specific educational requirements for this job, but a clean current driver's licence is preferred. Training arranged by Transpol is delivered on the job. For office-based work, basic computer skills are essential. There are many freight forwarding companies based around New Zealand and the skills learnt can be taken anywhere in the world. For those at school, the Gateway Programme provides an opportunity for hands-on learning. Well, this is certainly an interesting career and if you enjoy organising and providing great customer service, then freight forwarding has opportunities left, right and centre. After the break, we'll find out if working with heavy vehicles could be just the job for Casey. This is Just The Job. Welcome back to Just The Job, where every week we take a look at three different careers to give you an insight into just some of the incredible opportunities that are out there waiting for you. Now we're going to catch up with Casey next as he finds out what's involved in a career in heavy automotive engineering and finds out whether servicing and repairing heavy vehicles could be just the job for him. G'day, I'm Casey, I'm 16 from Nelson and I'm here to check out uh, heavy automotive engineering. So we're sending Casey off to Sunny Nelson's Hair Slot Motors to find out more about the potential career opportunities. G'day, Casey, how you doing? Good, I'm Mike Shallock, I'm here at Hair Slot, the operations manager. I hear you want to have a look around what we do in the automotive heavy industry. I would do, yep. So, yep we'll head over to the workshop and we'll get in and start looking at some trucks. Cool. Why right don't we head this way? Sure. <laughs> heavy automotive engineering is the service and repair of trucks. Um, trucks are the mainstay of our economy. They move the majority of the freight round. So we, we do all the servicing and repairs on, on heavy trucks. And there's also machinery involved in that as well. There's um, we have loaders, excavators, forklifts, etc. Mike begins by showing Casey through a pre-certificate of fitness check. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to check around the outside of the cab of the vehicle, check all the lights and the wipers and the horn, etc. So I'll hop back in the truck and work the controls and I'll holler out to you and you can tell me what's going on. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Righto. We'll just check the, um, the park lights now. Casey? Working. Working. Headlights? Yep. High beam? Perfect. High beam, good. And we'll try the uh, wipers. Definitely going. Going right. And the washers? Oh yeah. Yep, working good. With a thorough visual inspection inside and out, it's time to make sure the brakes are working. We're on the brake roller tester now. What we do is I apply the brake like normal driving and the um, machine uh, registers the amount of force each brake is doing and it checks for imbalance across an axle and also for the total brake force of the vehicle to right. make sure it complies with the regulations. And, let them and you'll feel the vehicle just, yep, there it is there. Right. But now we've got to move forward and we've got to check the two back axles as well. Okay. Next it's under the truck to check the steering, suspension, wheel bearings and other mechanical parts. Oh, this is a pit jack. 
Uh, this is used for lifting the vehicle, the axle off the uh, ground so we can check wheel bearings and steering again. Um, these are different attachments just for different styles of axles. The pit jack can lift up to 12 tonnes. With the front wheels off the ground, Casey can check that the various mechanical parts are securely attached and moving correctly. The person we're looking for has to be um, obviously hard working, uh, willing to learn. There's a lot of new technology in the industry, so we want people that are willing to learn and take on board the, you know, the electronic side of the business. And having a mechanical interest is quite handy to have an industry. It's, it's obviously you can be interested in the job then. And, um, what's going on around you. It can be a learn, but if you're you know, more interested or you've got a love of what you're doing, it obviously makes the job more fulfilling and more rewarding. Making adjustments of his own is Josh Thompson, one year into his apprenticeship with the New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation and training towards his heavy automotive engineering qualification. What sort of qualifications do you have to have to uh, be where you are now? First, you've got to go to school, get level one. Yeah. Yeah, level one NC8, and then. I guess you've got to find some place that will take you on. For I yours, Heslops? Yeah, Heslops. Yeah. Heslops took me on. I started as an after school boy, just yeah. cleaning up and that, and then offered me an apprenticeship. So Here you are. Yeah, that's the one. And what sort of personality do you need uh, for this job? You can't be lazy. So you've got to you want to do it. You've got to want it, you've got to strive to do it. Yep. Paul Hawkes, a customer service manager for the New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation, is paying an on-site visit to see how Josh is progressing on the job. G'day Josh, here you yeah. go. Good. Good to see you mate. You too. Excellent. And while Josh is catching up on his paperwork, a roadside rescue call comes in for a bus in distress. How are you going there? Yeah, you're good. You're broken down? Yeah, no, the bus won't start. So just you turn the key and nothing happens? Or? Turn the key and it's just dead as a dead. Dead as a dead, are you? Righto. We're going to have a look at the um, wiring down to the starter motor, mate. I'll just show you where that is. Right, OK, Casey, so it looks like the, um, the starter motor cable onto the starter's loose. We need to grab a spanner, 17 mil spanner, tighten it up. There's more probably time pressure because the truck needs to be kept out on the road. It needs to be kept mobile. It can only make money where it's mobile. So the operators obviously don't like the vehicle being off the road for extended periods of time. Right, we'll give it a shot to see if she starts. All right. There she goes. Oh, that's good. We've got it fixed, mate. These are good. So we'll get, uh, we can tell the bus driver. He can head away and we can head back to the workshop. All right. With the bus safely back on the road, it's back to the workshop for Casey and into the cab of a brand new fire truck. Automotive technician Henry Ford is just finishing his service. What are we up to? Yeah, we're just going to go in here and finish off the service and check all the bolt codes in this truck. With the laptop's interface cable connected, the computer diagnostic checks can be carried out. What I enjoy about the job is it's always, every day is different, you never, you do the same job but it's always on different vehicles and, and uh, there's different things happening, there's breakdowns that go to attend to and new technologies coming out all the time, new vehicles and you have to learn about that. So. The diagnostic check reveals a fault in the right ABS control valve and lets them know where to find it and how to fix it. I'm looking here and I find that plug's not plugged in properly. Alright. Okay. So if you like, you can plug, plug that one in for a twist. Should have sorted out our fault. Nice work, Casey, but what does Mike think? Casey's looking really good. He's showing interest in it. He's looking around, he's asking the right questions. He seems very interested in what's happening and keen, so they're the sort of people we're looking for. Oh, it was fantastic. It was a great experience. A national certificate in automotive heavy engineering level four typically takes three to four years of on-the-job training to complete in conjunction with the New Zealand Motor Industry Training Organisation. The secondary school training program startup provides a pathway into the industry. Useful subjects to study include English, mathematics, physics, technology and computer studies. The demand for automotive heavy engineers is likely to increase due to the growing number of heavy vehicles registered on our roads. Well, there's no doubt that Casey has what it takes and his love for heavy machinery means he might have found the perfect career. And if you want to find out more about that career or any of the careers that we've featured throughout the series, you can do so by just jumping on our website. If you don't have those details, don't worry, I'll give them all to you at the end of the program. After the break, Nathan goes rural and checks out a career in agricultural contracting. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job and if you're trying to figure out what career path to follow, then make sure you catch us every week because this show could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. We're going to catch up with Nathan now and see if mastering the many skills of an agricultural contractor could be the career he's after. Hi, my name's Nathan. I am 17 and I live in Matamata. We see rural contractors working on our farm and I just love to check it out, see how it works. Matamata, 
home to Hobbiton, horses and Slattery Contracting. Owners Roger and Helen Slattery have almost 45 years experience in rural contracting between them. While both run the business, Roger now spends the bulk of his time managing logistics. Their employees, machinery and various subcontractors supplied, serviced and organised is a huge part of the business. It's with Slattery Contracting that Nathan will experience really the job first G'day hand. Nathan, I'm Helen Slattery. Welcome to Slattery Contracting. I hear you're interested in rural contracting. Yes I am. Excellent, righty ho. Well, here's a t-shirt for you to wear today. Come on, I'll show you around. Thank you. Rural Contracting is utilising our machinery to get the best out of the farmer's land. So it's making hay and silage when they need it, um, sowing their crops, and just supporting the number one export earner in New Zealand, the dairy farm. An important part of Helen's job is delivering supplies to the contractors in the field. Today a fence post has been caught in the mower and the blades will need replacing. Okay Nathan, you can see one of these blades here is a bit damaged. Yep. Alrighty ho, so you've got to put that in there. It's got to go up here right there. Oh, there yeah, go. there you go. Just gonna push it down and take this blade out. New blade. There you go. Take your tool out. Get that out. Yep. Look at that. Done. Well done. With the mower ready to roll, Nathan climbs aboard for a quick lesson in tractor technology. Once you've uh, fired it up, well then it comes onto your computer. So what's this control here, Pete? This here, this is the, well this is really, it doesn't have gear lever as such, this, this is everything. This is your back, back mower, this one down here is your front mower. Right here then. Do you need a special licence to drive these sort of tractors on the road? No, you only got to have class two. How was that Nathan? Oh that was very exciting. I was just surprised how quiet it was inside the cab. Yeah, it's and, noisy out here. Yeah, it's very noisy out here. <laughs> yeah, and how flash and I never knew it would run on a computer. Yeah, so it's, they do all the work for you. Yeah, you but you've got to be skilled enough to be able to program. Yes, yes. Next up, it's back to base, a quick restock of supplies and into the field to load up a square baler. So does it automatically tie up the bales from when we put it in? Yeah, uh, yep. Uh, once it's threaded, yep, yep, it threads it through to the knotters up on the top of the baler. Yep. And when the bale reaches the required length, yep. it, it'll automatically tie the bales off. Having refueled the tractor, it's time for Nathan to take over at the wheel. Turn the nut, orange knob, so you get up to a thousand up here. And then you know how to start it moving. Yep. You start it moving forward and stay right in the middle of the road. Driving this tractor just makes all the other tractors I've driven before is just small. I love the experience, just what's inside it, how flash it is, and I just loved it. With the bales ready and waiting, the bale wrapper comes in to finish the process off. What is the purpose of like wrapping a bale? That's a good question. As part of the ensiling process we want to keep oxygen out so that the good bacteria do their work and create yummy tasty solids for yep. our cows. Yep. And how many layers of wrap do you need to put around a silage bale for it to keep out the oxygen? For the stuff that we make ourselves, and um, it's usually six layers of wrap. Right. Best bits about agricultural contracting? You're outside. It's no two days are the same. It's great fun, um, it's hard work. You wonder somehow, there are some days, how you actually manage to get through the day because there's so many things like different breakdowns going on and this, that, and the other. But it's just. It's a great way of living. I've been doing it for, um, I think it's 14 years now, and we're just, it's just great to be part of such an awesome team. Get um, some really close friendships with um, our drivers, our staff, because we're working so many hours, not always together, but we're working so many hours during the season. We put a year's worth of work in um, just over three months. So we're working really, really hard, long hours. So we play hard, we, we also work hard. And my name's Nathan. Hello, Nathan. My name's Anthony. I'm Anthony. Um, what I'm going to do here is we're going to calibrate the, the straw. Yep. Another part of the job is cultivating and sowing seeds. Seeds, see it's fallen under here. Yep. We'll go take it over the scales here and we'll weigh it. It's important to get the amount of seed just right through the drill to avoid any wastage. Yep. That's just about right. There are heaps of opportunities in rural contracting. Whether you want to start out as a driver, you can get really well paid. Whether you want to move on to buying your own machinery and become a subcontractor, or even if you want to start up your own agricultural contracting business. There is always um, different aspects that you can do, whether you um, do lifestyle blocks for short, smaller machinery, or whether you go really, really big. It's all like a big kid's playground. 
So from driving state-of-the-art tractors to fixing broken mower blades, Nathan certainly had a taste of rural contracting. But does he have what it takes? Nathan went really well. I think he's quite suited for agricultural contracting. He was able to use his nails, which was really good. He was also able to use his physical fitness and he was able to utilise his tractor driving skills. My favourite part was driving the tractor with the baler on it. So exciting. <laughs> Never done it before, but I would happily do it again. A modern apprenticeship allows you to train on the job while working towards a national certificate in rural contracting, leading on to a national certificate in agricultural contracting. Useful subjects to study at school include English and maths. To operate the machinery, you need to have the required class of driver's licence. Rural contracting includes many different areas within the agricultural field, including harvesting, cultivating, agrochemical, vegetation control and land development. Well done Nathan, well it looks like you've found yourself a great career if that is what you decide to do. So thank you Nathan and everyone else who featured in today's program. Now these days there are thousands of careers to choose from but that doesn't make the decision any easier. So we really hope that our programs will help you when it comes to making this all important career decision. To help you even more, here's Selwyn from Career Services who's going to talk about the changing nature of your career path and the learning that you can do along the way. The pressure of deciding on one career path for the rest of your life is pretty unrealistic these days, especially for a young person just starting out. Your skills and interests change as you grow. What you love doing now could be different in 10 years time, as industries shift and new jobs appear. Change is constant and no matter what career direction you choose, there will always be more to learn. So pick a field that interests you, that you want to learn more about and get started. Well, that's it for this week. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We're going to be back again next week with three more exciting careers and more advice on how to succeed in getting the career you really want. Now, if you'd like more information about the careers featured today or just how to make that right career choice, all you have to do is jump on our program website at tvnz.co.nz and enter the keywords, just the job. Good luck, and I'll catch you again next week. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.